Okay, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the second post-match press conference with the South African team. On my right I have uh, head coach Jacques Nien Abba and captain Sia Khaleesi. Hands up in the air, nice and quick if you can. First question please. Okay, gentlemen over here. Hi, Jack. Uh, Your hand up. Yeah, you see that's me. Hi, Jack. Congratulations for the win. Simon Valzer, Midi Olympic. Um, once again, the bomb squad uh, worked really well, and some players uh, appear to have been better performers than, than the starters. Are you considering uh, changing your, your, starting, your starting team? Because the, these guys from the bomb squad are always having a huge impact on the game? Um, yeah, l l like I've mentioned uh, before, in terms of our team selection, um, sometimes when we select a team and it's a 7-1, there's a, there's a big thing about, ab about the bench, uh, or 5-3, it might be an 8-0 next week, or 4-4, four, four, or 6-2. But the main thing, it's a squad, a squad of 23 players, and everybody's got a role and a responsibility. So the fact that the bomb squad or the guys off the bench come onto the field is because the guys who started um, laid the foundation, you know, so, um, and uh, I think that's what, that sometimes people miss. They see the performance of the guys coming on, but you don't know how much, uh, how much uh, the starters took out of the team that they play against. So, no, it, it, it is 100% something that we discuss with the players and they understand how it works. It's, it's not, we don't have an A and a B side or it's not, the bench is not, not sometimes we will start with a guy like uh, Ox and uh, then Kitsi is on the bench. So it's, it's, we don't operate like that. Gentleman on the right, at the back. Hi, Jacques, uh, just a question. One point victory against France, one point victory against England today. Was there a moment uh, during the match that you were perceiving maybe this match slipping away or there was always confidence and trust in what the guys were doing on the pitch? Thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, yes, I'm, I'm a start with uh, probably paying a lot of credit to, to, um, to England. I thought they were outstanding on the night. They, they had a very good tactical plan and, and they really put us under a lot of pressure. And it's something that we will have to go and have a look at and we will have to improve uh, in terms of that. Uh, for if New Zealand decides to maybe use the same tactic, uh, but it took us some time to, to, to get to, to grip with it. And, uh, but yes, I think um, that's probably the, the strength of, of, of this team is that they find a way uh, to, to, even if we don't play well, even if we, our things aren't going our way, they find a way to get a result, you know, and it, it took them probably 70 minutes to get into a position to, to, to get a foothold in the game. Uh, but the one thing, they, they, just, they, they just refused to give up and, and, they, and they, f uh, they fought to the end. So very, very proud of that. Gentlemen on the left, up at the back. Thank you. Anes Takurirunji from Kawa Sports in Uganda. Uh, Captain Sia. For from the start of the tournament, there's been messages from the Rugby Africa president to the box. Not sure if you've been receiving them, but uh, he's been showing support that Africa stands with you and wishes you all the best in the tournament. You've now qualified for the final. Have you been feeling the support of South Africa and the rest of the continent through your stay in France? Yes, definitely. We've definitely been um, been feeling the support. Uh, we've been seeing the support. Um, on, on our hotel, we have a, a video where you know where it's, uh, one of our sponsors gave us a, a screen so we can see the support, what's happening back at home. Mm. And we know the whole continent is honestly behind us. You know, some of the videos where people just sit and talk about how they feel and what it's doing for them. And I don't think there's any country in the world where people that don't have DSTV will go to a mall and all sit together and people keep the mall open and they sit there and they watch us play, you know, different from people from different walks of life. And I think that is exactly what's fueling um, the, the team. 
And yeah, it's it, it's special because we know we're not only representing South Africa but the whole continent in general. And if we do become successful, the whole of Africa um, th does win. So we do see the support and we do appreciate it. Gentleman right of here. Hi, Jack and Sia. Uh, on to interview from uh, Eurosport. Um, the game was not very uh, nice uh, to see and uh, South Africa was not as good as uh, uh, one week ago. Do you consider this victory as a, a little miracle? Um, like <laughs> England is a world-class team. Um, England is completely different to what they were a year ago. We, and they had a great... They had an amazing game plan today, which we took long to get um, to adapt to, and um, and it, this these things happen, you know. Um, it the thing that I take out of this game is the fact that we're able to dig deep and fight to get that victory, and we we're so grateful that we can be in a position to defend the 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 the, 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 the cup again. I know a lot of teams wouldn't be able to get out of that and get, get a win like that, so. Um, doesn't matter how ugly it is or how ugly it is to, to watch the game. If you get a victory, there's not going to say that it was an ugly victory. It's going to say South Africa won, and, and that's all we take for next week. That's all we needed. Okay, the gentleman at the back. Congratulations, uh, Jacques and Sia. Sia, can I just ask you about Jacques in, ahead of his last week with the Springboks before he, he, he moves to Ireland? What has he brought to the party? We saw the emotion that he had at, at the end of the game. As a coach, what has he brought to you and this group? It's a tough one. <laughs> um, we know each other from from yeah. when he was 19. I was I was I was um 18 years old. I got my I was contracted with the Cheetahs and then I got out. I was able to go to Western Province. And that's when I met Jack when I got to the institute when I was um 18 years old, um, turning 19 and him and coach Rossi used to come to the institute. The institute is like it's like it's we. It's an academy, the Western Province Academy. Um, that's where our, our, my, our foundation is a group. Eben was there, Franz Malebe. Um, there's a lot of other guys who play professional that are there. So when Jack and them came, it was normally the full contact day. We call it Copper Stamp. <laughs> you had to show who you are, and and I remember every time they came, it was intense. And I got to know him then already. And then as I went on, he became my senior coach and one thing that I love about him is he uh, he goes far deeper than what's happening on the field he got to know me he got to know my family he got to know my reasons why I do what I do when he speaks to us as a team him and coach Rassi they don't encourage us about tackle hard and all of that we all know what that is he goes on who am I playing for, what's driving us. And he knows my family, he knows my kids, he knows them by name, and he asks me how am I doing as a person. And that is why I can go and give everything for him on the field because he cares about the person, he cares about Sia, the Sia from the township. He tries and brings him out of me every time I, I play. And for the teams, and especially in big moments, and he sits and he, and he, and he talks about each and every single player our journey, it, it's so special to be known as a person, not just as an object or just as a rugby player. And that's what he brings um, to this team. And the fact that he allows families to be around, how much he loves it to see our kids running around. I know some teams are not allowed to have families, but that kind of family environment, that's what he creates for us as his team. And I've enjoyed every single year that I've worked with him and the tough times too when he comes and calls me out why didn't you work there he's always honest and he's always yeah it's I, I can't explain how much I've enjoyed and it was tough when he went away for two years but when he came back again it's like we clicked we didn't have to get to learn each other him and coach Rossi they just came in and they they, they change things you know uh, because they love they love the country but I know wherever he goes they they're gonna be lucky to have him because the amount of work he puts in the detail he gets into it makes life so much easier for me all i have to do just watch a, a screen and see the opportunities that are there so yeah he's a special coach and he's a special human being most of all an amazing father and a great husband so yeah we'll miss him and i'll be always forever be thankful because i remember when i first met him i couldn't tackle after that year we're playing copper stamp every day i had to learn how to tackle <laughs> Okay, gentleman at the front. Um, I'm not sure how you follow up that answer, but 
what was <laughs> going through your head when Andre Pollard was lining up that penalty with two minutes to go? Question for Rebbe. Um, I had no, I had, I had no doubt at all. Uh, I had no yeah. doubt at all. Uh, he's done it for us before, and um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it always cause like we. We we're grateful for the bench, man. For, for actually for the whole squad, like a guy like Marvin, uh, you know, and the guys that don't make the team, Marco. You know, it's difficult. Most players drop their heads. In this team, we remind each other. At the end of the day, when we are successful, they're gonna say South Africa won, not the the the, the, the 23 that played. The picture that Marvin shows us each and every single week. You know, Marco. He works on what the other guys are doing. Those things make it all work for us. And the guys that are, like we said earlier, that don't start, you know, they know when they come on, the opportunity is there. And we all have different roles in this team, and we respect that. So for us to get that scrum, for Oxy, you know, and 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 and, and Vincent and Bongi, well, Bongi has been amazing. I, I told him today, he's just grown since we lost Malcolm. His chest has just gone up, and he's taken the position. He's been amazing. So this whole st uh, squad in general, the medical team has been amazing. The coaching staff, they prepared already for the next game, you know. And so, yeah, uh, when Paulie took that kick, it was just relief, and also it gave us a lot of courage because that lets us know that we can do it. We can fight no matter how tough it is. Uh, and Jack, can you just... Yeah, can we move on? Next question, please. Uh, congrats, Sia and Jock. Uh, Sia, just one for you. Just a word on, on ox scrumming and Jock. What was better for you? Pollard's line kick before Ergius try or his penalty kick? Um, yeah, ox. Ox and the guys behind him have been special, you know, and we... We take pride in our scrums. Um, it took a while, and I think the guys that started, we grinded as hard as we could, you know. We, and and that's an important thing. We we try and lay the foundation, and sometimes it's difficult. They, you know, I mean, England was never gonna lay down and let us go over them. And and the guys that came on, they really um, took it to another level, like they did last week. Um, so yeah, to Oxy, Vinci, and, and Bongi, who went 80 again, it was really special. And obviously the guys behind him. Yeah, in terms of. <coughs> the, the, the kicks of uh, Andre, I think both, uh, Hendrik, because I think if we we struggled to get a foothold in the game and to, and to get things going and, and we needed almost like in the 2019 uh, uh, World Cup quarterfinal, semifinal, you need a 60 meter mall, you need something special to break to break the game open and, and I think that touch kick uh, that set us up for the try uh, it's the only try that could score today, tonight. So in this weather and these conditions, I mean, to 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 score a try against England, that it's probably that's got an unbelievable defence, and that uh, this is their first loss in in this tournament, you know. So uh, that was special, and then obviously big pressure on 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 nailing that last uh, kick uh, for for the win. Okay, Both. Hi, Jack. Jack. On the left up here. Hi, Jack. Um, your decision to remove your number 10 after 31 minutes, it was described as um, brave and brutal. But can you talk through the thinking there? Was it pre-planned? Was it game state? And if so, why? And, and how the player took it? How Marnie kind of reacted to that? Yeah, I think, like, like Sia said, uh, th that's the beauty of this group. We open and honest. And because we have the right players, uh, the, the players accept it. Sometimes things aren't going your way. You know, we've done it with, uh, I, can, I can say numerous, uh, we, we've done it with Bongi in 2018, where we took him off after 30 minutes. He was just, uh, for that specific day, he was just not uh, uh, on fire, you know. But he started the next week again. Uh, uh, the same with a guy like Billy. Uh, we we took him off uh, early because things didn't go his way. Uh, and and the the main thing is everything is for the team, you know. And they understand that. And uh, and that's the beauty of the squad, you know. You open and honest, and 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 the players take it on the chin. And it doesn't mean that he won't start next week, you know. It it's it, it's just unfortunately sometimes it's like that, you know. Uh, um, I thought. Um, uh, uh, I, I mean, everybody, uh, th we didn't miss a kick at goal tonight. Uh, every single opportunity we, 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 we got, we, we utilized. Uh, and both him and Andre, you know, that, that the kick that he also kicked in the beginning was a, was a tough one. 
Uh, but it's just listen. That's that's how it is. Uh, uh, it, it's for South Africa. It, uh, you you. It's not for the individual. It's not for the ego. It's not for. It's for South Africa. Uh, it's for, and and in South Africa we get messages. Uh, Tracy, full monk, full and, monk yeah. and and the school kids, and we, we see every single message they send to us, and and it's for them. So we can't put our egos in front of that. Uh, South Africa is more important. The Springboks are more important uh, than anything else. Okay, we've got time for one last question here on the front. Jacques, you're yeah, uh, As a team doctor, got some extra the hot tablets around. I think we might be a short supply in Paris tonight. Sorry? As a team doctor, got some extra hot tablets. They might, they might be in short supply in Paris tonight. <laughs> no, listen, definitely. No, it, it was tight. And, and again, credit to England. Uh, I mean, they were outstanding uh, on the night uh, in terms of what they did. And uh, we had to dig deep. Could have gone either way. Okay, thank you, Jacques. Thank you, Sia. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The mix zone will open uh, very quickly. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.